Nothing is impossible with you, Lord. When you sent Jesus here to this earth, that was our Christmas miracle. Nothing, absolutely nothing, is too difficult for you. And so, Father, we just lean on that understanding today, not in our own understanding, but in the understanding of how much you love us. And Father, I just thank you now, as I open my heart to you, that I would speak only what you tell me to speak to this congregation and those listening outside of here, Father, wherever in the building or by social media, Father, that you, they would feel your anointing and feel your presence. And Father, I thank you that your word is true and I give you praise and glory. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. This morning, we are going to speak about the Christmas miracle. The Christmas miracle, the day that Jesus Christ came to this earth to set, set the captive free. And I'm going to ask you to turn in your Bibles to Matthew, Matthew the first chapter, if you would, this morning. Thank you, Lord. Matthew the first chapter. I'm reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. And here we see the story of the angel of the Lord appearing to Joseph. And he was going to tell him some profound things that Mary was about to do, that God had chosen Mary to bring forth the Son of God. And we pick it up here at what the angel said to Mary in verse 21. I believe that's the verse I'm looking for. Yes, verse 21. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, the Greek form of the Hebrew Joshua, which means Savior. For he will save his people from their sins. That is, prevent them from failing and missing the true end and scope of life, which is God. All this took place that it might be fulfilled, which the Lord has spoken through the prophet. Behold, behold the virgin shall be come pregnant and give birth to a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you, Father God, that your word will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish that which you set it forth to do. I thank you, Father God. And he shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. 2,000 years ago, in a field outside the city of Bethlehem, a group of shepherds watched the flock beneath a starlit sky. In the quiet hush of the evening calm, these men tended sheep, just as their fathers and their fathers and their fathers before them had done. Nothing in the ordinary events of their day prepared these shepherds for what would make this night like none other. On this night, these Israelite shepherds would be among the first to witness the fulfillment of God's promise to dwell with man. And I title my message, God's Christmas Miracle. The Christmas miracle of God was Jesus Christ became flesh and dwelt among men. That you and I could be seated in this place today and understand the joy of our salvation. Understand that we will never die, but we will have everlasting life. Amen. So now centuries later, You and I are enjoying abundant life because Jesus was willing to come to earth and live among us. Once again, we prepare to celebrate the greatest gift ever given to mankind. I thank God for the love that we feel at Christmas, beloved. I thank God for the hustle and the bustle. It's all Christmas and getting the gifts and putting them under the tree and all of the festivities. That's all wonderful and that's all good. But God's Son was the reason for this season. God's son paid the ransom for you and I's sins. God didn't have to give his sin for us. After Adam fell, God could have said, well, he failed. 
Adam messed up. I'll just choose to make another world and start all over with a new man. But God did not do that. No, he didn't do that. Scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes, beloved, Adam did sin. He and his wife listened to the serpent instead of God. We know this. They became separated from God and the wonderful life that he had created for them. But God loved man and God loved woman too much to leave them in this situation. No, he said, no, you will not suffer. My son will come. Oh, hallelujah. And while they still were in the Garden of Eden, God put his plan into motion to deliver mankind from the devil's grip. He told Satan, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. And then little by little, century after century, God carried out his plan to deliver you and I. He worked through Abraham, he worked through Isaac, through Jacob, he worked through Joseph, through Moses, through David, and many others to bring about his will on this earth. God said through the prophet Isaiah, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. As Matthew told us, Emmanuel means God with us. And this, beloved, is the miracle of Christmas. God was going to be with his man and his woman again as he had been in the Garden of Eden. Finally, all of the wanderings, all of the battles, all of the hardships, all of the prophecies came to a climax. One quiet night in Bethlehem. The angel of the Lord told the shepherds as they kept watch over their flock, fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The Messiah had come, the one who would be anointed by God to deliver his people and all mankind. The Christmas miracle was now here. The miracle of Christmas that we celebrate every year. Do we know what it's all about, beloved? Do we understand how much God loved this world? We've seen so many times the Charles Dickens novel, A Christmas Carol. It was released on December 19, 19th, 1843 and has been out and has never rather been out of print. It tells the story of a man called Ebenezer Scrooge. We all know of him. A wealthy, sour, stingy man who said, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding. Yet one Christmas Eve, Scrooge is radically changed into a generous and happy man with great humour and insight. How many of you experienced the Christmas miracle? It could have been January, it could have been March, it could have been May, it could have been July. Yeah. But you turned out to be a Scrooge that realised that, that was all, there was more to life than just things. When we realised and we received the Lord Jesus Christ, we became just like Scrooge, a happy person, a person that wanted to give, a person that wanted to love, a person that wanted to help others. That all happened in an instant when he realised how quickly he could leave this world. Oh, hallelujah. With great humour and insight, he became this man. And the story is, captures the universal longing of every person for inner peace. When we watch that, that video or movie, whatever, it still is fresh. We still get the feeling that God is still real. Yes. Amen? Yes. As a young man, the Apostle Paul 
opposed Jesus and his followers with a vengeful spirit. He was going everywhere to destroy the church. He went from house to house, dragging out both men and women alike, threw them into prison, and the half's not even been told. But one day he encountered the risen Christ and his life became a different story. How many of you can say amen? Amen. And beloved, if you're here today and you've never received Christ, this is the greatest miracle you will ever receive today. By simply saying, Jesus, come into my heart. Make me new again. Create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. Jesus will come in. Jesus will help you wherever you're listening from today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. Hallelujah. In a letter to Timothy, Paul's son in the faith, Paul described that life-changing event by saying that even though he was a persecutor of God's people, even though he was a persecutor of God's people, the Lord was generous and gracious to him. He filled me with the faith and love that comes from Christ Jesus. First Timothy, the first chapter, verses 13 and 14. That was Paul's word. Jesus was born into our world and gave his life, beloved, so that we can be forgiven and we can be transformed through faith in him. This is most certainly the Christmas miracle. A change in behavior begins with Jesus changing a heart. That's how behavior changes with the heart. Hallelujah. In Luke 2.14, it says, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. Yes, the Christmas story is much more than just the wonderful story of the birth of a very important baby. It is the center of the story of creation. It is the story of a creator's love for you and I that led him to give up, to give up the glory, beauty, and perfection of heaven to come to this dirty, decaying, deceased earth which is covered with pain, suffering, and death everywhere. He came to open the way for man to receive the wondrous gift and ultimately the gift of eternal life, which is more precious than silver or gold or anything you can ever accumulate in this earth, beloved. To know that when your spirit leaves your body, to be absent with the bodies, to be present with the Lord, that is the hope of the gospel that has never died. That is the hope of eternal life. Hallelujah. The Christmas story does not begin in Bethlehem. This might come as a shock to you, nor even with the Old Testament prophets. This seemingly foolish plan of God began in God's heart. That's where it began. It began in his heart when he saw that Adam and Eve had fell, when he saw the betrayal. That's where it began. What am I going to do? He knew. God knows everything. Hallelujah. That's the miracle of Christmas. The story is told about a couple of Japanese soldiers who were found on one of the South Pacific Islands years after the war was over, World War II. They thought the war was still going on. At that point, they had been temporarily deaf due to the bomb explosions and they were unable to hear the aircraft's announcement declaring the end of the war. Many years later, they were still hiding in that jungle, fighting a war that had already been won. How sad, beloved, yet many Christians still think that the war is on between God and man. This is even sadder. They don't know that one cry, one birth, and one life changed everything forevermore. That night, that night when Mary heard that baby cry, this world was changed forever. Would never, ever be the same again. These angels weren't proclaiming that there would be peace among men. No, no. That certainly has not happened and we all know that. It's not happened since Christ came and it's not what we see happening now. 
Jesus even said he was not sent to bring peace among men, Matthew 10, 34 and 36. These angels, beloved, were praising God that the war between God and man was over. Oh, hallelujah. What the Father saw across that manger was the shadow of the cross. That's what Father saw. Father knew what would happen to Jesus a short 33 years later. He knows everything. Hallelujah. What the Father saw was the cross over that manger. Prior to Christ coming on this earth, God dealt with us, humankind, through the law. The law was a system of rules, beloved, a system of regulations with appropriate punishments for disobedience. The only thing that was wrong with that system was that we all broke the law. Therefore, we came under the curse instead of the blessing. There was no peace because of our sins. Jesus ushered in a new way for God to deal with mankind. We can now be totally clean and free of all sin. Isn't that good news? Because, not because of our performance. It's not what you can do, do, do. It's what was done, done, done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there was no peace for us until God brought this new way to deal with mankind. We now can be totally clean, not because of our performance, but because of our faith in Jesus. Thank God. Thank God, beloved, if you never hear another word I say, thank God the battle is over. Thank God the peace treaty has been signed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you enjoying that peace? I'm not saying that we don't come through things. Even this year, we know what many of us have came through personally, in our own lives, in our church life, in our country, and in the world. It has certainly been far from the happiest of years. But when you have that peace, and you realize no matter what you come through, your God will bring you to the other side. He will. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. So are we enjoying that peace? Or are we suffering the hardships of war because we missed the announcement? There is peace and goodwill towards you and I from our loving heavenly Father. This is the miracle of Christmas. This is the miracle of Christmas. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. And I praise you and I give you glory. The miracle of Christmas, that you and I's sins are in the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered against us again. And we can leave this place today free, free. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I just want to close this message today and I truly mean I'm closing. It's an early service, but I want you to enjoy your family today. I want you to enjoy the love of Christ today. I hope you've heard the true message of Christmas today. And I want to just share this with you because of, I felt last night actually the Holy Spirit was showing me to, 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 to do something a little lighthearted at the end because of what we see with the children today. And so this story is a mother's Christmas story. A, prou a proud moment came during the children's Christmas pageant. My daughter was playing Mary, two of my sons were shepherds, and my youngest son was a wise man. This was their moment to shine. My five-year-old shepherd had practiced his line. We found the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, but he was nervous and he said, the baby was wrapped in wrinkled clothes. My four-year-old Mary said, that's not wrinkled clothes, silly, that's dirty and rotten clothes. <laughs> that exchanged 
caused a wrestling match to break out between Mary and the shepherd. <laughs> Their conflict was resolved by an angel who in the process bent her halo and lost her left wing. I slouched a little lower in my seat when Mary dropped the doll representing baby Jesus and it bounced down the aisle crying, Mama, Mama. <laughs> Mary grabbed the doll, wrapped it up and held it tightly as the wise men arrived. My other son stepped forward wearing a bathrobe and a paper crown. He knelt at the manger and announced, we are the three wise men and we are bringing gifts of gold, common sense and fur. <laughs> the congregation dissolved into laughter and the pageant got a standing ovation. The pastor said later, I've never enjoyed a Christmas program as much as this one, wiping the tears from his eyes from laughing. For the rest of my life, I'll never hear the Christmas story without thinking of gold, common sense, and fur. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Remember, I just seen this sitting here, what the children put on the cross. Remember how he came for each and every one of us. If you're here today and you do not know Jesus as your savior, or you're listening to me by other means of communication, I ask you today to be sure, be sure, be sure that Jesus is your savior. It's so simple. It's just so simple. Ask him into your heart. In 1977, that's what I did. And my life changed forever. Just like the Apostle Paul, in a sense, I'm not putting myself in his category for one moment. But he said himself, he was the chief among sinners. Well, I had my share too. But that night, I saw the light. That night, I knew I'd never be the same again. That night when I cried out to God, Lord, save me. He helped me and he did. And I'm speaking this to you today from the depth of my heart. The greatest gift you can ever receive is salvation. The greatest gift you can ever receive to walk in this earth with peace is Jesus Christ. So if you're here today, beloved, and you do not know Jesus as your Savior, I ask you today, make Him your Savior and your Lord by simply saying, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I know I'm a sinner, but I need your grace. I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. If you've said that for the first time, no matter where you are or where you're listening from, God bless you and welcome to the family of God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's stand to our feet if we can. God bless you. God bless you. Father, we just thank you and we praise you and we give you glory. The Lord has blessed you. The Lord has kept you. The Lord has made his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord has lifted up his countenance upon you and the Lord has given you peace, beloved. I bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go with Jesus, please. Go with him. He's going with you. Put your masks on. Greet somebody. Tell them you love them. And we are dismissed. And I'll see many more of you this Thursday night for Christmas Eve. God bless you and Merry Christmas.